Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Register with your Thursday Inspired Thought. I hope you're doing great out there. It is time to awake yourselves and to get ready for your day, your world. You're going to make it happen. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Mr. John Neighbor. He is one of our most famous and decorated Olympians uh, in the, the, the games, I believe it was in Montreal, right, in 76. First person to win two individual sports. He has gone on to numerous Halls of Fame, and just he was Phelps before Phelps was even thought about. Right? Uh, <laughs> so high done so, done some amazing things, John. So so welcome to this little inspirational thought that we do every Thursday, just to inspire our audiences and give them a little bit of, of a taste of from negative news to actually just great positive news and what we can do with that. So welcome. Thank you, John. I'm inspired by you. Well, well, I'm, I'm the one that's inspired. <laughs> So, okay, now we're done with the pleasantries. We want to get into this. Sure. You know, a lot of times, uh, Olympians, Paralympians, they're trying to make the transition from sport to the real world, so to speak. And they've been doing it for eons, eight years, sometimes 12 years, trying to make their dreams come through. How do you see athletes train for their transitions and what, what they can do with the, their sporting career? I competed in the amateur era. You couldn't make a living by being an athlete at the Olympics, and therefore you were always training or preparing for the world afterwards. Now the money is so rich mm -hmm. that it's a lot harder for athletes to realize they need to start thinking about their post-athletic career earlier. Dig your well before you're thirsty is mm -hmm. the philosophy, but now the money is so big, if you win a Michael Phelps eight gold medals, you don't have to work a day in your life. And so many of them are putting all of their eggs in that one basket, and for the few that succeed, more power to them, mm -hmm. But for the vast majority who come a little short, um, they need to, to make that shift. And the hard, the hard news, the, the tough truth, is that you have to work as hard in the real world as you worked in the pool or in the gym if you want to be as successful. Many people say if you work really hard in sport and you become successful, you'll never have to work again. And that's, that's a, a, a negative thought. You know, I don't have to work. I'm entitled to enjoy success. And that's not true. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you realize that you have to work just as hard later, the easier your life becomes. What can businesses learn from an Olympic athlete or a Paralympic athlete or somebody that might be in the sports world? Well, the biggest transition for me is the fact that in sport, for me to win, you have to lose. I have to beat you. Mm -hmm. In business, it's got to be a win-win philosophy. For me to be successful, I have to give my customer value for their, you know, it has to work both ways. And so you have to be a lot more cooperative. However, business can learn from sport in, in a variety of areas. Number one, what used to be good enough for a gold medal four years ago is not good enough for a gold medal today. Mm -hmm. You will constantly have to be innovating. You constantly have to be pushing the bar. You have to set your target higher than you know you can reach. You have to be ambitious. You have to take risks. And it's a, it, it's a constantly evolving uh, industry. I, I found out that sports and the military are the two most innovative industries. Mm -hmm because the cost of finishing second is too much to bear. You don't want to finish second in a war, right? So you're always coming up with new ideas, and that's the way business needs to be. Constantly evolving, constantly inventing, and then doing the work necessary to be competent or rather excellent at your job. You practice the skill until it's almost automatic and, and perfect. Right, and, and I like that. that, that's a great segue for where I want to go, because you do have value and you have the win-win philosophy, and you talked about the military. And of course, uh, audience, you may not know, but but John was the impetus and the the inspiration behind the Lou Zampieri story. Oh, uh, I mean, very kind. oh my gosh, it's coming out December twenty fifth, and phenomenal uh, individual. How did you find this story that was buried kind of deep within the walls of the Olympic movement? You give me more credit than I deserve. <laughs> Lou Zamperini was a nineteen thirty six Olympic runner in track and field. He was a juvenile delinquent who ran from the cops until the cops said, "You run pretty fast. You ought to think about track and field." And he became an Olympian in the 5,000 meter. He was trailing the field by 50 or 60 yards, and he closed the gap in the final lap of the 5,000. He ran it in front of Hitler at 56 seconds. It sent a shock through the crowd. And though he didn't win a medal, uh, he, he earned the reputation of being the guy who would break the four-minute mile. And he would have broken it had the next Olympics occurred, but they were canceled because of the war. Louis becomes a bombardier in the South Pacific, and on a reconnaissance run, his plane goes into the drink. 
and he and two others had to survive in a life raft. He lives for 47 days, a record for life on a raft, until he's captured by the Japanese who recognize him as an Olympian, want to break him for propaganda value, and he doesn't break. He's so strong and firm. But he is abused by a particularly abusive, sadistic guard, and he returns to the United States at the end of the war, fantasizing about revenge, and it caused him post-traumatic stress. And he had nightmares, until his wife told him about a Billy Graham experience, and he went down and listened to the preacher, and he decided to forgive his captors, forgive the bird, and the nightmares stopped. And that story was recently published in the Laura Hillenbrand book called Unbroken, and that movie will premiere on Christmas Day. Well, I met Louis in, in 1983. Uh, he and I were both USC Trojans, and we're both born-again Christians, and somebody put us together, and we just clicked. Wow. We just enjoyed each other's company, and I've had the privilege of participating in two Olympic torch relays where I passed my flame to his torch, wow. and he runs off, and, and, and uh, we just were very, very good friends. Well, when the book Unbroken was published, I was privileged to travel with him for a year, making appearances and talking about his story. Uh, sadly, he passed away earlier this year, but he's going to be honored as the Grand Marshal of the Rose Parade, even though he won't be there. His family will be traveling down the Colorado Boulevard. Well, you have uh, uncovered, unleashed a gift to America. And with America really looking and celebrating our, our men and women who have served so valiantly with inside of World War II, it's going to be it's a phenomenal story about this, this of, of grit and determination, kind of really the, the true American spirit. And it should be noted that that's not the only book. He wrote his own memoirs mm -hmm. called Devil at My Heels. So there's lots of ways to learn about Louis. I don't take credit for introducing his story. I just take credit for carrying some of his luggage. Listen, uh, John Neighbor, we've been with him, phenomenal swimmer in the Olympic movement, but also with, with his, uh, his, his group, Neighbor and Associates. Please look him up. Uh, he's, he's great. How can people find you, John? JohnNeighbor.com. Come and visit. Oh, that's pretty easy. <laughs> J-O-H-N-N-A-B-E-R.com. You got it. So John's been a phenomenal inspiration, and we say to you, you, you go, go forth, forth and inspire, inspire your world. world.